This is the Voice Coach Podcast for all the tips and tricks on getting the most out of your speaking voice. I'm Nick Redman and I'll be sharing everything you need to know to keep your voice healthy, sounding great and working the way it should. If you're an actor, voiceover, speaker, presenter or podcaster, you're in the right place. Hopefully it'll be a wee bit of crack too. Let's get started. We interrupt this resonance training phase of the Voice Coach Podcast to bring you an important podcast about... Allergies. Oh dear God. (laughs) Now this one may be specific to the UK folks right now. Hashtag hay fever season. But you know, if you do suffer from hay fever or allergies anywhere else in the world, at some point this might be uh, useful to you. This is basically a short and sweet episode on what to do when hay fever affects your voice. And some of this can be related to general allergies as well. And it's inspired by hay fever season here in the UK. (laughs) Hay fever and the voice, what to do? Basically, I've had an influx of clients ask me how to combat the vocal symptoms that come with hay fever. Things like sinus congestion, allergic rhinitis, dry throat, scratchiness in the voice, early onset vocal fatigue, laryngitis even, runny nose, post-nasal drip, irritating sort of habitual coughing patterns. There's just loads of them and I really feel for people who have hay fever badly, just like many of my clients. Basically, when your immune system reacts to the pollen and produces chemicals like histamines, all sorts of inflammations and irritations can occur within the vocal mechanism. So I have a slight disclaimer in here, obviously, because I am not your doctor, physical or primary caregiver, and I don't know your specific symptoms or the medication you are currently on. (laughs) So what follows here is not a list of drugs to buy. (laughs) It's a few suggestions of things that can help to relieve the effects of hay fever and allergies on the voice. A few things basically to be careful of in terms of medication side effects as well and suggestion of some exercises you can do to try and keep things on track. So without further ado, step one. If you do work with a medical professional to sort out your hay fever control concoction, (laughs) you know, a little drop of this, a tablet of that, a spray of the other, make sure that your doctor knows how important your voice is day to day. That seems really simple, but you have to make sure that they know if there's anything in those drugs or what's prescribed that's going to have an effect on your voice, i.e. hydration or irritation or anything like that, you need to know about it. That's a key piece of information and they should be able to tailor your care around that where possible. Okay, step two, up your systemic hydration, she says, wanting to take a drink. Most allergy related stuff leads to some sort of mucus thickening and or drying. So overall systemic hydration from fluid intake is key. I'm going to say it again, up your fluids. You know, whether it's feeling phlegmy in the throat area, post-nasal drip, saliva issues, clicky mouth, whatever, the mucus needs thinning out and this takes hydration. Surprise, surprise, I do have a whole episode on hydration if you need some help there. It's episode five, way back when. So do check that one out. Be honest with yourself, you know, how much are you really drinking? Can you drink some more? Some of the allergy medicines, like a lot of them, do dry things up as well. So you'll need to be counteracting that with extra fluids anyway. So drink some more. Just drink more. Have some more fluids. Step three, still on the theme of hydration, (laughs) explore topical hydration too. So basically hydrating at source. Now steaming is a classic and still soothing for people. So if you've got a steamer, crack on, just water. No fancy schmancy oils in there, just water. Even things like menthol that are purported to really help the voice actually can be very drying. So you don't need that right now. And also, if possible, as well as a steamer or instead of, get yourself a wee nebulizer, whether it's a vocal mist or something else, because the saline solution in that will be more efficient at actually hydrating vocal fold level because it's absorbed at a cellular level in contrast to the steam, which these days it's just thought to sort of hit the vocal folds and basically evaporate back off again. I'm also a huge fan of a saline nasal spray, which is readily available at most chemists or places like that, even if it's just the basic one over the counter. Or uh, something like Sterimar is really handy. It's like a really nice, easy to use 
nasal spray that's just saline solution. And when I wake up in the morning and my nose feels a wee bit dry inside, those are really useful. Now, some folks also love what's called a neti pot or basically a way of um, sluicing (laughs) the sinuses. Oh, I think the official word is irrigation. (laughs) I've always called it nasal douching, to be honest. But yeah, if you want to irrigate your nasal passages... Give that a wee Google, neti pot, and see what you can find out about that. Because some people do like that. But the general advice is don't do it more than once a day because you don't want to wash away all the kind of nice naturally occurring immune cells and whatnot in there that your body needs. It's balanced like all things. And the other thing is don't use it if you've already got a horrific cold or infection up there because swilling that around your sinuses isn't going to help. Okay, so that's hydration from a systemic level and also from a topical level at source. Step four, if you like a lozenge, that's fine, but go for a glycerin pastel to soothe the back of the pharynx if you like. Avoid anything, again, that has menthol, which can dry out or pain-killing properties because it won't help in the long run. I also really like, if you've got a bit of a cough, something like an all-natural pastel. So the one that I really like is called Bronco Stop. I find those really soothing for if I've got a bit of a cough coming on. Always check the ingredients, of course, in relation to your current lifestyle and, you know, what you can and can't have. Step five, just, you know, live well generally. (laughs) People can get more susceptible to respiratory tract infections, colds, all that kind of stuff when they're existing in hay fever town. So lots of good food, fresh fruit and veg, which will also help your hydration, and rest are really non-negotiable. Look after yourself, okay? (laughs) Just look after yourself. Step six, if you do find your voice is getting tired a little earlier, try and factor in a few more vocal naps or little breaks in your speaking and employ some vocal resets during the day too. You know, a bit of semi-occluded vocal tract work like lip trills, slides up and down on that puffy woof, or a straw work, etc. You know, blow in some bubbles in a cup. That's a lovely way of releasing and resetting. And a little bit of tongue release, perhaps a little bit of jaw release, just so that if a little tension's building up because voicing is more effortful for you right now through those hair fever symptoms, you can try and release it a little bit and reset it. Lots of people actually feel that SOVT work first thing gets the mucus moving too. So that might be worth investigating if you always wake up and you feel like you've got a horrible frog in your throat. Step seven. Now, this is tough because... Often the irritation in the throat leads to this, but try not to get into a habitual throat clearing place. Try just swallowing instead. So anytime you feel that you need to have a little throat clear, just stop. Swallow and that can help get a little bit more mucus flowing down there and help you inhibit that desire to cough or clear your throat. There's also a really funny thing you can do. (laughs) I never really know if it's any better or not than throat clearing, but a, a kind of gentle, airy, (sighs) it always makes me laugh because it's not something I'd want to do on the bus or in public but if you're in the studio and you feel like you've got a cough instead of going and really slapping the cords together if you can try this I kind of hitch breathy onset huff I suppose for want of a better word that might be something to think about too although swallowing's grand I just wanted to throw that other one in there for the lulls but of course again keep it easy if you're pushing pushing then you're going to get loads of airflow through there and loads of tension and it's not going to help a gentle huff (sighs) 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 I'll stop now I'm just amusing myself there are also lots of holistic suggestions out there for hay fever like Local honey is supposed to be really good at helping you build up a natural immunity to the particular pollen in your area, which might be worth investigating. Avoiding foods with histamine in them as well, like wine, sad times, and all sorts of things like that. And look, your body is your body, so depending on how awful a time you're having with hay fever, it might be worth investigating those too. But you know me, I'm not a fan of giving anything up unless you really, really have to. Right, so main takeaways here are... Firstly, be honest with your doctor. Tell them you need your voice and hopefully they can tailor your uh, prescriptions to support that. Number two, hydration, systemic and topical. Number three, keep your lozenges basic. Don't go for any fancy stuff with pain colours and all this kind of nonsense. SOVT work both to help reset if you're getting vocally tired a little more quickly and to get things cleared in the morning. Replace your throat clear with a nice swallow or a weird breathy huff (laughs) and 
saline nasal spray. Okay, I'm going to stick a few useful articles in the show notes just if you'd like a few more insights. But for now, hang in there. Good luck. It will end. (laughs) This is a season, if you're talking about hay fever. In the meantime, hang in there. Good luck. Hay fever season will end. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Voice Coach Podcast. To get the most out of your voice, come on over to our free community on Facebook, The Voice and Accent Hub. See you in there.